Hannah was one of those lesbians who looks like a beautiful boy, hazel eyes, that cool short curtain of hair hanging over one eye, broad shoulders, little hips, barely there, titties, more like M&Ms. Hannah played basketball and softball and soccer, and when she wasn't being in a Eugene Lesbo, an English grad student, she used to wait for me by my blue Toyota pickup truck between classes and hijack me and drive me to the coast where we'd stay up all night getting it on the back of my truck, drinking Heineken's, I don't know why Heineken's, and waiting for the sun to come up, then we'd drive back and go to class, or, you know, I would. <laughs> Hannah thought grad school was like totally lame and she much preferred sex and club dancing. <laughs> so when Hannah captured me and my best friend Claire in the hall in our 18th century women writers seminar by grabbing our wrists and pulling us toward the wall, I already knew it would be something sly. She smiled her sly, had a smile and whispered, want to go to the coast? <laughs> I got us a room. <laughs> My friend Claire blinked so blankly, her eyes looked just like a doll's, and I think I coughed, like, academically. But I have to admit, my crotch went messy panties pretty much that instant. <laughs> Listen, you probably think you wouldn't, but I'm telling you, if Hannah said, get my truck, we're going to the house, raising your little trickster eyebrow and putting your hand right underneath your breast and against your first couple of ribs and kind of her other hand in your belt hoop going, I dare you, I dare you, you fucking go. <laughs> So there we were crammed three-way up front in a pickup truck, beers at our ankles, Hannah at the wheel, my best friend Claire in the middle looking a little like our kid because she was shorter than us. <laughs> and me with my mane of blood and weirdo hair out the window yelling, Woohoo! Fuck you assholes! <laughs> well, my best friend, who was shorter than us, kept squirming between us and I mean she was talking like normal and laughing like normal but I was watching her and her eyes had little electrical sparks in the corners and I kept looking at her but she kept looking away or into the rear view. <laughs> In the truck, Hannah, we were headed for the Sea View Inn in you, kind of near Eugene, Oregon. If you've never been, you're missing a Les Secret Hideaway because it's located on a bluff above a beach full of agates, fossils, and tide pools. Whales migrate within view of the sea, and lions, sea lions play in the surf. Elk, eagles, and deer are frequent visitors, but that's not why women go to the Sea View. <laughs> the Sea View has themed rooms. <laughs> anyway, halfway there, my best friend had to pee, so we stopped at a ratty little gas station in the coast range between Eugene and Florence. Peeing women, if you don't know this, trigger other women's bladders. So I went in the bathroom with my best friend. Those gas station bathrooms are squalid dump holes that smell like someone's shit air freshener. The floors always have weird black slime on them, and the sinks are always stained with something that looks a little like a serial killing. And more often than the toilet is backed up and either toilet paper or, well, God only knows what. Miraculously, our toilet was not backed up. I tried to break open the crappy machine with the tiny sex toys in it, like French ticklers, no doubt installed for truckers, while my friend peed her pee. When it was my turn while peeing, I looked up and said, Everything okay? My friend did this thing she did when she was anxious. She scratched a mole on the top of her head that only people who knew her knew was there. Yeah! Everything's okay! <laughs> then why are you scratching your mole, I said. <laughs> I wiped up and flushed, looking back to see if it was going down or coming back up at me. It was fine. It was a normal toilet. My friend went to look in the mirror, and the glass made her look kind of, you know those gas station bathroom mirrors, they pretty much like make you look Special Olympics. She messed with her hair, pushing her bangs one way then the other, and then I said, are you sure you're okay? What's the deal? And then she finally turned around and said, she's not okay, okay? I'm fucking not okay. And her voice had a tinge of, I'm a grown up woman trying not to cry. <laughs> And I sat back down on the toilet and I got small and quiet and I said, what's up? I love you. <laughs> and she closed her eyes and she took a deep breath and she held it in. And I hate to say it, but she, she kind of looked like a Muppet, just right that second. <laughs> and I said, Claire. And then she spilled it. I never licked pussy. <laughs> what? I said, I'm not a lesbian. I never did that thing. 
And I sat there staring at her. You've never done anything with a woman? Never. <laughs> so I sat there some more, and I looked at the ceiling and the floor with the black slime, and I looked back at her, and I loved her. I really, really loved her. And all I could think to say was, <laughs> I thought that's what grad school was for. I thought that's why women went to grad school. Isn't that why we went to grad school? Isn't that why we're in a women's studies class? Don't women just go to grad school so they can do other women? <laughs> Shut up, she spurted at me from the corner of the shithole. It's not funny, I feel sick to my stomach. And I said, sick to your stomach? What are you talking about? And she said, I'm afraid I'm gonna barf. And I said, why do you think you're gonna barf? And she said, because I'm afraid I'm gonna look pussy all gag. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I looked at her, and I looked at her, and I thought, wow. So what I said was, with my grad school knowledge, Gagging's kind of cool. <laughs> then nobody said anything. We just stared at each other. And then I tried to look, lighten the mood, so I said, I'm going to do you right now, you little minx. <laughs> and I pulled her pants down, and then I said, Jesus, your underwear is like pink. People still wear pink underwear? <laughs> She's like, whatever. And I'm like, I know, whatever. And we looked at each other, and I went down on her, and I have to tell you this in case you don't know, even though you look all mature and worldly and West Coast. <laughs> girls all taste different. Her taste, I'd say, specifically with grad school knowledge, <laughs> was a cross between kelp, heavy cream, and a hint of pee on the palate since we just peed. <laughs> smelled like hay and skin lotion. I mean, I would score at fancy restaurants because I know flavors and smells. So I did it. I went down on her and she shivered against the wall and she shivered against my face. And the thing I thought was, why can't it just be like this? Then I explained to her, look, if the pussy licking thing is still getting on your nerves, there's lots of other stuff we can do when we get there. Do you trust me at all? And she said, yeah, I trust you. The little cottage we had at the Sea View Inn sported a fireplace, so I said, don't do anything without me, and drove off to get the fire hood. When, when I got back, the doors opened, I went in, and the two of them were in the bed with the covers pulled up just beneath their tits, and Hannah's M&M boobies and Cl Claire's glorious pendulous glow smiling like Cheshire cats, Cheshire cats who were kind of wanting to lick pussy. And in the middle of the bed was a little suitcase that Hannah had brought, and it was filled with specialness toys. I immediately dropped the wood on the floor, shut the door, and stripped, and launched myself into the bed with the two women who were waiting for me. Whoever was staying in the other cottages at that hotel, they must have gotten an earful. Hours of woman on woman whose regular lives didn't allow for such abandon. Sometimes Hannah's fist up my cunt, Claire's mouth on mine, or me sucking her epic tit. Sometimes Hannah on her stomach, me up her ass with a strap on, Claire behind me giving me a reach around, a skill she, yep, intuited from grad school. Sometimes Claire on the floors, and Hannah filling every hole, licking every mouth, rubbing her clip, making her scream, making her entire corpus shiver, her head rock back, her woman wail, let loose, gone primal, calm, and shit stains and spit and tears. I came in Hannah's mouth, her face between my legs like some goddess in a new myth. Claire came in Hannah's fingers in her ass and pussy. This is women's studies, I kept thinking. Her body convulsing and falling off the bed. Me wrapped around her and laughing and hitting my head on the wall. Hannah came, jamming a dildo up herself while I buried my face in the clit of her. She pulled my hair. She pushed my head. Claire curled under me, licking and gagging, and I was laughing because I was gagging. So isn't gagging good, but not, not, not stopping? I don't know how many times we came. It seemed unending. We got dissertations. We ate each other. We ate pickled herring. We ate three or cheese. We ate the animal out of each other's bodies. We ate steak. We ate chocolate. Two women, my chocolate. We drank each other. We drank all the beer. We drank all the wine. We peed outside. We got high on skin and cum and sweat. We got high on... Hot, ah, that was weird. We came in waves, we ran out and into the waves. I wanted to stay like that forever, outside of any relationship. 
I'd ever had. And inside the wet of an unnamed sexuality, the moon, a grand spectator, as full of alive as the ocean outside, the woman of it nearly drowned me. It cleaved my mind. And again, again, waves. I don't know why women can't make the story on the page do what they want. I don't know why it's not the next great American novel. I don't. It should be. The form should follow the content. Okay.